Hi everyone, my name is Diane Aldridge. I am the Global Business Development Lead for Industrial AI ML at AWS. Uh, I have, uh, I joined AWS a year and a half ago, and I, but before this, I have 20 years of global manufacturing experience. Um, I did pretty much every job you can imagine, including operation, business development. So I'm an engineer by trade, grew up on the factory floor. So I, my passion is modernized factory. So I love factories. Uh, so this is a dream job for me to use technology to modernize manufacturing. So today uh, I'm going to talk to you about improve uptime with predictive maintenance for industrial equipment and using AI ML, machine learning. So thank you for your joining us and let's get started. So by now, um, we have heard the term industrial 4.0, also sometimes referred to as industrial internet of things, IIoT. So IIoT is the next revolution for industrial customers. We are at the a really exciting moment with machine learning, artificial intelligence, and digital transformation in general across asset-heavy industries. So there are common themes across these industries like manufacturing, transportation, logistics, agriculture, power, utilities, energy, mining, etc. So machine learning went from being an, a, an aspirational technology a few years ago to mainstream extremely fast. I'm sure you all can feel it. For a long time, the technology was limited to uh, a few major tech companies and hardcore academic researchers. But things began to change while cloud computing entered mainstream. So compute power and uh, data became more available and quite literally machine learning is now making an impact across every industry finance retail fashion real estate healthcare and today we're mainly talking about industrial and manufacturing it's moving from the peripheral to now a core part of every business and business uh, and industry According to uh, Deloitte Insights, a uh, state of AI uh, in the enterprise, um, by like almost two years ago, 63% of the companies are already investing to catch up with the rivals, with their competitors and narrow the lead. Recently, IDC reported worldwide spending in artificial intelligence market is set to grow about 19.6% year over year. In 2022, uh, um, it's projected to reach $432 billion on its way to breaching $500 billion. That's a, a billion dollars with a B uh, by 2023. The opportunity for AI machine learning within industrial manufacturing domain is really high. Uh, a couple key workloads that we're seeing a lot of innovation around our customers particularly with machine learning, are in a few specific domains. These where we see them, again, the most traction and low-hanging fruit, quote-unquote. In the engineering and design domain, AI ML can be used to accelerate time to market uh, for R&D, for design, lower the infrastructure costs, and improve collaboration. For production and asset optimization, which is what we're going to talk about today, this is about how we can lower costs, whether related to energy, to machines, uh, to labor, improve machine and asset pro uh, productivity, or reduce production downtime. Sustainability is an area where AI and ML are having a big impact as well. So this technology is helping customers to lower cost and reduce waste and even help to identify areas for process improvement and mitigate consumptions of water, consumption of air, gas, electricity, and steam. So for smart product and services, this is all about unlocking field of IoT data to accelerate business growth and engaging your customers digitally for new services and enhance customer experiences and improve loyalty, customer loyalty. And finally, for supply chain management, which everybody has been talking about since pandemic, obviously has been an area for technology innovation for a long time, right? 
But in this area, we see opportunity for improved forecast accuracy, uh, reduce inventory costs, and improve capacity utilization. So the reality is that there are, of course, thousands of use cases within these workloads where AI and ML, machine learning, can come into play and help customers to digitally transform. But there are some use cases, right, there are begin, they're beginning to rise to the top as areas that are becoming more commonly adopted and readily available to implement and are delivering real results with speed and with scale. So here are four of those uh, use cases where uh, having a huge impact for a customer today, like in, especially in industrial areas. They include one, uh, improving asset performance by reducing unplanned downtime, uh, automating visual quality inspection using computer vision, improving operational efficiency at the edge, forecasting demand, and managing inventory. So these are the four areas where applying machine learning and AI um, to the vast amount of industrial data created by existing systems, by sensors, by assets, can help you to better understand and leverage your data to run your business more efficiently. It allows you to quickly and easily transform data into insights. And with these insights, you, that, that they, those insights can help you to proactively address breakdowns, address shortages, and other challenges, and trim costs by reducing downtime, you streamline, streamlining your infrastructure, and improving quality assurance. So now we're going to uh, move on to our uh, topic of the day, which is improve asset performance by reducing downtime. This is the latest um, in um, a study, uh, the cost of unplanned downtime. This is by ARC, okay? So um, this is just a sample of data. So we want to work backwards from what it costs to our customers and then talk about the technology. So this is the business impact that we really want to focus on and helping our customer. So if you look at it, some of the uh, examples for, uh, for oil and gas is $20 million per incident for automotive, like uh, um, in the panel stamping uh, process is 43,000. CPG, consumer packaged goods, um, that's uh, relatively lower. It's conservative estimates of $15,000 per, uh, per hour. Pharmaceutical, uh, which we start seeing a lot of, uh, gain a lot of traction, is uh, and they, they, they cost uh, $500,000 per batch because you had a lot of waste, right? If, if you have unplanned downtime, you have to throw away a lot of the stuff. And for paper, it's a 31,000. So these are the costs and you uh, you will know, a customer will know what, what it costs them. So what our goal is try to, um, um, to to uh, uh, try to help the customer to eliminate these, right? To reduce these unplanned downtime. If you look at this chart, anybody in the uh, running plants and then performance, and you will see this is not new. So the as and uh, to to plan today's and um, the landscape to look at the uh, uh, um, predictive the maintenance, you have two phases. Phase one purely reactive, you just run to fail and firefighting. Phase two you plan it, meaning that you plan um, to do your routine maintenance, whether by walk around, by weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly, and you can do it by yourself or you contract it out. But this is a plan downtime, but you walk about, but a lot of majority of these walkabouts result into maybe 80% of them are okay, and then you, you or you miss it. When, the, when, when things actually happen, uh, the routine maintenance will miss it. So that's uh, a lot of uh, current practice. What we try to get is the phase three. It's a predictive. So we want to uh, detect anomaly and uh, diagnose what the, uh, what the problem is and then and reach to the predicted maintenance and to address it. So that's uh, um, the uh, um, landscape of the uh, unplanned downtime. So uh, for when you see the predicted maintenance and reduce cost, um, the studies show that if we do it right, we can reduce costs 18 to 25%, and we can increase asset availability by 5 to 15%. This basically, essentially, if you don't do anything, if you do this right, it will, you can get significant more out of what you've got, right? So forget about new machines, new plants, just 
you know, that that 30 year machine you 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 already, you know, you you're running, how do we get more? Right? And the existing workforce, existing machines. So other um uh, other uh, um the uh, benefit you can see it can pre prevent failures. We can minimize ri minimize risk, prevent quality I issues, right? Minimize recalls, warranty claims, optimize inventory. So all these uh, um, uh, all these uh, benefits um, we already start seeing. We if we uh, in, uh, have this technology and improve this improve these areas. So. Um, predictive maintenance, right, is not new to most industrial customers, and yet we are not, nobody's doing it very well. Very few are doing it very well. Why? Because of these three reasons listed out on the screen there. First is it's industrial facilities so complex. You have machines at different ages, right? Some are one year old, some are five, some are 30, and they're all running. So it's very, very complex. Uh, second, you have thousands of pieces of equipment in a, in a plant, in one single plant. And then when you're enterprise, uh, you know, um, you know, operations, you can have, um, you know, 10, uh, 20, 30 plants around the world. So you have tens of thousands of these machines. So when you try to monitor it, it's overwhelming, right? And, and in sensors, uh, people start putting sensors, uh, start installing sensors as a start a couple of years, uh, a few years back. We we also see newer machines actually have sensors built in. But most people are not doing anything with those data, those sensors collecting. Why? Because it's so complex. So next one, you see this is um, uh, the uh, um, if you see the chart on the left hand side. This chart is a, a, a illustrate when you have sensors and you have those data, you see this mess of a chart. So um, you collect so many alarms and it's very confusing. And so you basically, the end user, you just throw your hand in the air and say, I don't know what to do with this, right? So um, if you look at the right hand side, we basically move the, uh, um, um, with a uh, uh, the right technology, you move to the right. And then our goal is to get you to the right and give you insights. And instead of look at the uh, mess of the data, you're dealing with insights and you can find out root causes and make quick decisions and generate work orders. So you, you act basically. So as we uh, dive deeper into how we can use data to improve maintenance, a common question is, what do I need to get? Uh, what do I need to do to get started? So here we show a progression of increasing data requirements for data-driven maintenance strategies. Many manufacturers mostly doing preventive, ma preventive maintenance or even reactive maintenance we, like we talked about earlier. So here is a typical data required um, um, is OEM will provide um, guidance for time-based or uh, cycle-based maintenance tasks. If you, are, you, you get that uh, requirement, just like when you're a car, you may also be leveraging an experienced technician or subject matter experts as your machine whisperer and give them their familiarity with the uh, equipment Right? So preventive maintenance can be enhanced with additional historic, uh, historical data to demonstrate which preventive tasks are most impactful to the reliability of the machines. So when those tasks really need to be uh, uh, completed and you, you rely on those, for example, a OEM uh, may tell you that to change the oil in your car you know, um, uh, every 3,000 miles. But based on additional data, you may be able to get away with changing your oil only 5,000 miles, right? So that's the power of data. As you connect machines and reference uh, sensor data within the machine or process, you enable condition-based monitoring, uh, call it CBM, condition-based monitoring, or rule-based uh, rule based uh, maintenance. So you're collecting data in real time, measuring it against a threshold value, and based on predefined rules, um, uh, you're, you, and, alert, and these rules were alerting you when um, the measure value trends above or below that threshold. So common data input here can be like temperature, uh, fat vibration, or flu level. To enable predictive maintenance, 
or prescriptive maintenance, additional historic data and system data is needed. So you, you have those data to make predictions from multiple variables with operating context. This is very important. Typically, higher frequency data is required to build these kind of build and train and execute the machine learning model that predicts a failure. For example, um, on a stamping press uh, in a car manufacturer, a predictive model may require fine grain um, data right, high frequency reading of the force used to com uh, complete a press, um, bearing temperature and production order details to know that the material is being run uh, and the thickness and hardness of the material. And to make the predictive insight a prescriptive, historical maintenance work order data can be required, and then we can match them to current predictive failure uh, with uh, similar failures that were experienced previously. So with these matches, a, uh, the recommendation can be made automatically based on the maintenance tasks completed uh, so we can resolve the previous failure. Finally, to achieve a uh, cost optimized strategy, you will need to add cost data to the uh, we add the cost data to the model in order in order to optimize the cost of performing a given maintenance task against the risk of failure and incurring planned and unplanned production downtime. Um, I want to focus on um, um, this chart a little bit. This explains what AWS is trying to do to address the problem we've been talking so far. So if you look at it on top, and that's a three simple steps, right? To use machine learning to do to do an asset optimization. So sim three simple steps. You collect data, you detect anomaly, and you have some sort of output action. You whether uh, generate a work order or send a technician or order a new machine. So that's three simple steps. So to mirror this is in simple steps, and at AWS, we uh, come up with uh, a lot of solutions. We have a lot of technology can do it to help the customer uh, to help make it easier for them to make decisions. We bucket our solutions. If you look at the right hand side, we, we have buy option, we have build option, we have customize option. So the reason we do that is every our, most of our customers they um, they're spread across uh, uh, in a different uh, stages of digital maturity level. Some just getting started, still using a spreadsheet and whiteboards. Some are like you know um, Amazon fulfillment center. We are like almost fully digitized. So you you have, everything is digitized. So so in that in between of those, there are multiple uh, people at different stages. So what we want to do is uh, because because number one issue when our customer tell us is how to get started, we say, okay, we will come up with a buy option, meaning that if you don't know where to start, you can as easy as just buy a, a complete end-to-end -end solution, a starter kit. That's what we're talking about in Amazon Monitron because it's a uh, it's a machine learning out of box. No, uh, nothing is required. You can buy it, deploy it, um, mirror your experience to set up your uh, smart devices at home, and you can start monitoring your device, uh, your machines within a few minutes and, and just download a, phone, a smartphone app and the, the way you go, okay? So that's the buy option. Now, in parallel, we also have build option. Let's, if you say, well, we have been installing a few sensors and in different type of machines, we have been collecting data. We're just not doing anything with them. So we have this build option called sister uh, uh, service called lookout for equipment. Basically, this is a pre-built machine learning model in the cloud. So this one is a sensor agnostic. So basically you have, if you have historical data in the historian, you can, uh, regardless what kind of sensors you have existing, you can inject those data and then into the machine learning model and the outcome the, uh, the the insights, the intelligent insights, and then to, to give you advice on what to do, right? So that's the build option. Uh, the third layer of options, customize options. So let's say you try those, you are started, and you say, we're ready to do enterprise, multi-sites, multi-year deployment. We have a strategy. We, we build our business case ROI. We're ready to invest. And then you can also customize a lot of your solutions. And this is, we have Greengrass, we have SageMaker, and we have an, an IoT solutions that help you to build out that. So that's, um, um, our, our goal is we, we bucket these options 
solutions to help our customer regardless where they are, again, in their digital journey and their readiness, their organizational readiness and their budget. And then to get you start as simple as one starter kit for $1,000 or um, you know a quarter million dollars and to do a, a massive overhaul. So um, the the best thing is if you find partner with us doing this, regardless of where you start, right? Um, none of the effort and money will be wasted. Our goal is um, and e eventually all every single effort you make. And once you get ready and once you're ready, they all fit together. They should just very easily fit together so you won't waste money to build additional connections and save old data or rescue um, 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 old models or things like that. So we want to make sure we continue to evolve with your organization. So this explains our strategy. I, I spent a little bit of time on this. So now um, I want to talk about this uh, buy option, which is Amazon Monitron and how it works. So. So Amazon Monitron is a end-to-end, -end, is that buy options, a machine learning out of box, what I call it, or um, a smart watch for the machine. So um, it, co it comprised um, with a, a, a few things. It's end-to-end -end, um, solution. It comes with sensor, a gateway, a, a machine learning model in the cloud. So I'm going to the next workflow. And then I'll explain. So you can see this is basically almost self-explanatory, right? So the Amazon Monitron service, it comes with a, a wireless sensor. It a, a, has a vibration and temperature. So it has, you can uh, use an industrial level glue. You put it on the machine. So it's great for retrofit. Doesn't matter if the machine is one year old or 30 years old. So you use industrial level glue and put it on the machine. And then it's a, a communicate wirelessly via Bluetooth low energy with Wi Fi or Ethernet gateway. And then the, the gateway will use Wi Fi, leverage Wi Fi, send the data into the cloud. And in the cloud, we have a pre built machine learning model uh, to detect anomaly. So it takes the data, train the, um, it, will, it can train the machine, um, a machine learning model, and then finish up with a, a smartphone app. So, meaning that the customer can look at a phone. And then we have, you can download it from uh, Apple or uh, Android, and then there's a smartphone app for Amazon Monitron. You can download it. So this whole process, uh, basically, the reason we say is end-to-end -end is start with sensor and with a smartphone alert um, if, and a design for maintainers meaning that you can hand over some uh, a technician uh, to do ma machine ma uh, maintenance and you hand over this box and they can just follow the instruction on the smartphone app. The user experiences mirror your experiences set up smart speakers and any smart devices Alexa at home and then you can set it up and then um, within minutes and you can get it going. The, uh, um, I, I want to talk a little bit more about what exactly it's um, in this, uh, some, some features. So the sensor itself uh, comes with basic compute power. So it sends the data, package data, um, process the data, and encrypted the data, and then it, it, it send out via gateway. So the whole, uh, uh, as soon as the data left the sensor and all the way to the cloud, it's completely encrypted, so it's highly secure. So this is, a, a see, it's very simple. It's very easy, and then and that's uh, the uh, uh, overall uh, overview of um, um, Amazon Monitron service. So this will give you a, um, a detail, uh, just a screenshots of the, uh, the phone app. You can see um, on the left-hand side, this is you use a phone, uh, smartphone to activate the sensor. And then you can see that's a, a phone user interface app interface. And to see, uh, you can name your asset. And you can see, it give you a warning, alarm. And you can uh, uh, react to that. And then on the right-hand side, you can see what that's what it looks like. You can see the charts are very visual. And you can see temperature and uh, vibration data there. And then with asset details, names. And you can resolve it and then um, enter uh, your input right on the app. So these are the, um, so these are the, uh, the, uh, the type of machines Amazon Monitron is better for. It's mainly um, we if uh, if if you want to give it a try, it's important to make sure you put it uh, you try it on the right machines, meaning that these are best suited 
for uh, rotational equipment. We're talking about motors, gearboxes, pumps, bearings, compressor fans, continuous running uh, rotational machines. Uh, these are the best ones. Uh, but these are very common. And uh, they're they they being used across all industries. Uh, doesn't matter what you make, and you can you can find them in the uh, in the um, engine room and, and back room. And these are foundational. The key benefit of uh, Amazon Mantra I want to talk about um, and list it out. One is simple. It's very simple. Uh, you do not need, like I said, you don't need to be an expert or anything to to just install it. Okay. Um, the second is there's no machine learning mob, machine learning experience, no coding, um, absolutely not, and then because it's all pre-built, cost effective. Um, my previous life, I um, I used to uh, you know uh, my job related to building sensors, so I I I know this this sensor right right now uh, retail you can find them on Amazon Prime using your Prime account. It's uh, 115 dollars per sensor. So, so that's a retail list price. So you can see them uh, on the Amazon.com. Uh, we sell them in five cents price. So it's highly cost effective. The reason we make it so cost effective is because we want to do, we want to to scale. We want you to put it because the first step of digital transformation is what is digit is collecting data and collecting data from everywhere. So to do that, you need to make sure the sensor is cost effective, so you can put it everywhere. Right? That's why I said it's it's called smartwatch or Fitbit for the machine. So you you're supposed to put it everywhere. So that's why it's cost effective. So it's designed for you to scale. And so you have a complete picture of thousands, tens of thousands of pieces of machines in your plant. Uh, data security will cover that. Um, we we that's our number one priority. Uh, we were not we were not allowed to joke around. We were not allowed to go to market if we don't meet the highest level of data security. And it's really really important for our industry customer. Last one is it's a very unique. It's a it's it's a, a continuous improvement, meaning that the sensor you buy today it will continue to get smarter. Same sensor. So uh, because this uh, this uh, service we can update the the, the firmware uh, over the air via a gateway and then come back and to update the sensor. So um, the sensor, as we update, just like when you see you continue to update any apps on your phone, your sensor, as we improve, you will get it will have better features and it, will, um, it wouldn't cut at any cost for existing sensors, right? Um, I'll give you an example. Uh, when I joined last year, in uh, uh, joined Amazon last year, the sensor when we launched the ba it's battery powered. This sensor is the last was uh, three years. Last three years. Fast forward a few months, uh, three four months, and the same sensor we updated the, the our engineering team updated the firmware. The sensor life right now lasts five years now. So this sensor right now has a battery life of five years. So I now want to uh, uh, spend some time to talk about the uh, uh, the sister service called. Uh, look out for equipment. So remember earlier we talked about uh, a buy buy option and build option and, uh, um, and and a customized option. This is that build option. It's called look out for equipment. So it's a pre-built machine learning model in the cloud. So it does not have a hardware, right? And uh, it can take bring your own data which your a lot of customer already have it might be stuck in, uh, in the it could be level it could be something related to humidity it could be current and and it could be any data that you stored so um, you can inject them into uh, this a pre-built machine learning model and then out come the uh, um, the insights so this is the uh, uh, sister services and quite a, a lot of our customers they use this um, uh, uh, um, in parallel for for the machines that do not have sensors and then the rotational machine, they put an Amazon um, 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 monitoring on it. And for the uh, all the other assets, they're already collecting data, they can use this. And then they combine them, build a single pane of glass and on the dashboard, and then they can have a, a very good view of all their assets. So, um, this is a, a. I will explain why. And this explain why. And um, why look out for equipment is a very good choice for industrial customer. So this is a. a, a remember, we have three steps uh, to do uh, asset optimization: collecting data, detect anomaly, and then a, 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 
uh, have some action. So to detect anomaly using uh, data and using machine learning model, traditionally, this is all you have to do, all these boxes, right? You, you need to input the data. You need to have time, you need to prepare the data, right? You need to prime it. So you need to have time stamp, uh, time stamp alignment, imputation, algorithm selection, hyperparameter selection. So these are all the, you know, um, all these uh, multiple steps are listed there. I won't read it all. Uh, and then eventually go to the last box, which is output evaluate. So this will cause, so this require you to understand um, how algorithm work, how machine learning work, and also it, it require you to have um, um, your own data scientist um, on staff, right? So the last thing any industrial customer want is when you save a little bit of money on the maintenance or uh, on the maintenance cost, and then you have to invest another uh, a, a army of our data scientists on your own. So that makes no business sense, right? So that's what lookout for equipment. That's the beauty of lookout for equipment. The um, what lookout for equipment do is it cover all those boxes in the middle. So all you need to do just provide the data and with a very uh, a small effort. And you come, you you inject the data, and you out, and, and you can have the insight and output, and in in and, and you can just so you can just focus on what you're supposed to do, your your actual action uh, to deal with uh, with deal with maintenance, deal with machines, deal with operations, rather than spend time and money in that middle box. So that's essentially um, in a nutshell what lookout for equipment would do. So, um, and this is a, a demonstration of that you can see on the left hand side, that's your time series data. And typically they store in the historian and then you inject into look out for equipment, right? And then you can see that um, and when the, uh, when the uh, information, um, when you bring the data into look out for equipment and it will do the modeling for you, right? And model the behavior of the equipment. And it will be able to tell you when normal uh, behavior is happening for that equipment or alert to any abnormality abnormal, uh, abnormality in the behavior of that specific assets. So on the left, you can see that, you know, you can, there's an example of mess of time series data and various sensors and on a very complex asset. And after the lookout for equipment, it builds a custom model and it will and it will be able to tell you whether everything is operating normally and you don't need to take an, any action or whether an abnormality has been detected and the they will rank the order list of exactly which sensor uh, are um, telling us what's happening so all of this is to help your technicians uh, really laser focus on any potential issues so that you can take actions in the right place at the right time to avoid issues. So this is um, look out for equipment in an um, explanation in the NASHA. So let's discuss a uh, just a very quick example um, and these the, the, the use cases, right? So here we're showing a, a workflow uh, for predictive maintenance. So it's a little bit complicated chart, but if you just uh, uh, follow me through at the bottom, it's basically the walk work process, right? So uh, in a manufacturing plant, you have wealth of data being generated, right? And on this whole production line. And once we identify what data is being captured, for example, you can have temperature, you have line speed, you have uh, machine speed, and where these data are being stored, because historic, uh, in a long time, if you go to a typical factory, even uh, today, the data is being stored just everywhere, some in spreadsheets, some in work logs, some in the uh, asset management system, some in the SAP, ERP system, right? So we can begin to ingesting these data um, from the shop floor into a data lake, uh, right? That's the right strategy. So you gather the data, uh, gather them all in a place. And then if you're running, let's say a ERP system uh, like SAP, right? It could be uh, other, uh, other type of ERP system. And you can contextualize that data with the uh, production order, uh, bill of material, inventory supply, uh, supplier data that all exist in the SAP environment, in that ERP environment. 
And if you're also running a um, SAP, let's say, um, uh, predict maintenance module for the plant maintenance, the, the data lake can be further enriched with maintenance records and asset settings. So with all of this data in a single repository, we can now add machine learning to start driving insights for predictive maintenance or optimization. So this can be done using Amazon Lookout for Equipment or a custom uh, predictive maintenance model or optimization built in the SageMaker. So this is our uh, build option or customized option. Okay? So the real-time data contextualized by historical records allows the machine learning model to uh, better detect anomalies and improve over time. What's more, integrating with S, um, like a SAP uh, predictive maintenance module, right, will help further mature the model to not only to uh, be predictive, uh, predictive, but also prescriptive. So we can uh, look at maintenance records for the previous occurrence and give failure event uh, and prescribe action based on what was done the last time it, it occurred. So I, wa I, I want to uh, next just walk through some very simple um, uh, deployment, like uh, actual use cases. We have gained, uh, we launched it last year, we gained traction, we have um, some uh, um, success stories I want to tell you and excited to share with you. The number one, when I'm our number one user, uh, is Amazon Fulfillment Center. So we have been using Amazon Monitron for two years plus now. And we use this uh, across uh, all our fulfillment fulfillment center as and to monitor. This is a solution we use to monitor our conveyor belts. So you, as you know, that we have uh, lots and lots of uh, um, uh, miles and miles of conveyors. And then the reason every uh, any single uh, con uh, consumer can and receive a, a Q-tip in you know, in two hours. It was because we we constantly, these are 24, uh, 24 seven running and we can't afford them to break down because every minute we have millions of customer um, impacted. So we use Amazon Monitron and to uh, to monitor our conveyors and you know, under conveyors is uh, it's just motors and gearboxes. So that's what we use. We use uh, Amazon, uh, we use Monitron and to monitor that. And then we, we have saved tens of millions of dollars. And we were able to, since we launched this solution, we were able to uh, reduce our failure rate to 70%. That's seven zero. So it pays huge dividends. And, and the other thing is we talk about scale. Um, we, you know, at, uh, Amazon Fulfillment Center, I'm sure everybody agree, it's a large, large scale global operations. So it's very important for us to uh, to pick a solution that, uh, you know, can, uh, could, can handle that kind of scale. And Amazon Mantra meet that challenge because uh, at the cost and ease of use. And so that's, um, and then, and then we have gained tremendous um, value out of it. So this is why we're so excited to or to uh, launch it out to our industrial customers and to share this technology. So this is our first. Uh, and there's some you can see there's some uh, uh, use cases and some pictures of how uh, where we install and they're the conveyors and you can see in the warehouse and then some of the I know those screenshots are um, it's hard to read, but yeah. So that's uh, just give you an idea. Uh, and what what you know what are it's real and what our real um, asset management system screenshot look like? We generate uh, thousands of work orders and we save um, a, a lot of uh, 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 customer shipments based on this. So the next one I want to walk over, walk walk uh, walk you through is an, another um, enterprise major customer of ours is Coke Agriculture and Energy, and they're an early adopter. So um, I, what's interesting is I want to walk through their strategy with you, so you um, so we, we can uh, I think we a lot of enterprise industrial customers will share their thought process, right? How what what they're thinking when they try to look at these adopt uh, look at this. Uh, um, solution. So, so Coke uh, Agriculture, right, and the, this uh, um, a case, we call it in, in short, um, they, they're advanced sensor users. They have used different type of sensors for a long time. So they, they, they know sensors, 
they have a, 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 a good predictive a maintenance strategy. So what they realize is they have a, a category of less critical equipment, right? Uh, they're not monitored today because mainly because of scale of it and because of economics of it, because most of sensors in the market today, it's cost prohibitive to monitor all these uh, um, machines, right? But they have lots of them. They have spare pumps, motors, and they're mostly run to fail and ne ne neglected, right? And then so they're just, uh, the maintenance team just were uh, waste a lot of time to do routine maintenance or just um, um, firefighting. So they wanna add additional sensors to increase coverage, to basically just collect data from all machines. The strategy basically is they want to think big, is digitize everything, and then but they want to they from their past learning is they want to start small, so they can test it, and if it doesn't work, and that's okay, nobody gets hurt, and then they want but if it works, they want to scale fast. So that's so think big, start small, scale fast, and monitor and meet that challenge. Right. Um, and so when you think about scale fast, right, you want to minimize a few things. You want to minimize procurement time. You want to minimize sensor costs. You, might, you want to minimize uh, data cost and installation labor and um, uh, things like that. So here are some of the, um, the customer, what they share with us. This is their key point of view when they're trying to consider, evaluate different type of, um, of sensor options, right, and solutions. So we talked about they want a minimum and no expertise required. Because when you talk about scale, they want to uh, almost have, imagine you have a, um, you know, um, a dispenser and then just um, you, you, you have a mass order and you have uh, you have a place and then everybody, whoever wants five sensor, 10 sensor, 20 sensor, they just go get it and then they, they self-serve. So they want that minimum. They don't want the uh, anybody say, you know, I want to talk to the vendors about these sensors. I want to talk to somebody IT or somebody at, um, you know, ma machine shop and about, about these. They, no, it should be self-serve. So minimum, no, no extra resources need to add it. Okay. Overall vibration is a key indicator, healthy indicator, so rotational machines. Continuous data tell a whole story because they want to be collecting this data and then they uh, combine with their other data uh, they've been collecting and they tell a whole story uh, of a true health picture, uh, establish a true health picture of their plants. And they also want to um, a uh, uh, low cost, right? To scale, you have to have low cost to make make it uh, economical. Uh, leveraging existing infrastructure, no extra, infra no new infrastructure, no extra infrastructure resources need to be added to this, and minimize the system costs and data management uh, costs. The last one is very interesting. They want a, a sensor that's rip and replace. The reason being that is when you have tens of thousands of these sensors and then installed, the last thing you want is to have another resource to keep track of them and then either be replacing battery or see where they are. And because when the, when the sensor costs a lot of money, let's say even a thousand dollars a sensor, right? And you still need to keep track of it because that's not that's not a cheap thing. So. Um, and then, so then you have to have additional resources. You have the inventory. If you replace an asset, you have to say, what am I going to do with the sensors? Do I need to, is this still good? Or how many batteries? And it's just a whole a lot of uh, another work. So they don't want that. So to scale their past learning is, we want a sensor that can allow us to rip and replace, meaning that's low cost enough. So if they replace a motor, the sensor goes. So because it's not worth the uh, resources to, to keep uh, wondering, to keep dealing with it. So Monotron basically meet all these uh, key point of view. So this is a simple approach for the uh, for their implementation. So on top, you can see they use Monotron as is, and then they pipe the data and, and as is, meaning that the data goes to a smartphone app, and the uh, technician will just use the the phone and they, they love it because they can look at the phone, they can train, they can look at the phone and tell them what's going on and they can just go deal with it uh, as is and then, and then things are fixed. Great. So they love it. Now in parallel, they also pipe the same data into their OSF high, into uh, OSF high, into a data central. Remember earlier we talked about data lake, a central location. That's what they do. They pipe all those data into a central location that and, and all the other type of data are piped into that same location. And then they actually go ahead and build their own machine learning model so they can have a really good prediction um, um, 
insights of the whole multi multiple sites. So this is how um, their process and, and, and how they're using it. So I thought it's very good use case. I want to uh, walk through that thought process with you in details. And this is some pictures of Coke industry and what they uh, what they use. Um, this is a little bit old data, and then so the, and they uh, they tried it, and then now they're uh, scaling. So this is one of the uh, uh, one of the use cases, and then insights you can see on the left hand side. Uh, that's the uh, the phone app. And it, it tells them there is a um, alert on the uh, vibration, and that it, this is a blower, right? And then and they confirm that nor if it's a, just a normal um, sort of a, a, a way um, to inspect, they wouldn't they wouldn't be able to detect it. Machine learning um, actually detect them ahead of time, and this avoided a a major. Uh, um, a down, major downtime, and then they might have lose this bower. So they were able to um, avoid the shut, and they they saved the uh, um, at the optimum time to fix this issue. So this is one of the success stories. And the last I want to uh, uh, talk to you about is a very recent one we just finished. It's a, uh, a monitoring deployment. About 234 sensors are personally involved at a, um, a major medical. Uh, equipment manufacturer. Um, so I won't go into too much details. I just want to cover um, this um, uh, this uh, um, basically the result. We we last uh, this uh, last 90 days and then 234 assets and then we were able to get 60 times return um, and the uh, uh, we were able to save the customer four hundred and five thousand dollars. Um, this is the last, my last slide. I want to, we talk about uh, digital maturity. I want to finish uh, the, uh, the presentation with this slide. And the, 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 uh, we're all going through the industrial 4.0 four, uh, four uh, journey. Um, it's, uh, we're on a very exciting time. Um, what we realized and what we learned from our customer, and then and we have we learned a lot in the past year or two, um, based on the what the what the customers are going through and what the where the technology is. So there are four stages of digital maturity. Right? The number one, first is uh, it's a localized uh, real time visibility. Right uh, at this level, and you will have the the, the benefit of you have uh, all the you know the measurements KPI based, right? Key performance indication based, and you prioritize use cases. Uh, you have your work cells. You focus on your machines. And the second stage is enterprise wise. When you do it, um, it's enterprise wide visibility. And in this at this stage, um, you will do you combine real time and contextual data. Uh, you try to automate manual processes and you execute at multiple sites. So that's the second stage. The third is predict, uh, predictive operations. Uh, you, at this stage, you try to integrate operating model with predictive an analytics, right? Supply chain, operations, you know, uh, demands and all that. Continuous improvement program and, and also, it's because you, you have data all set up, it's AI, um, uh, AI artificial intelligence, machine learning driven. You truly use the, uh, you prepare all the data and you're using that to make decisions. And last but not least, is cost optimized optimization. So you, this stage, you, uh, you have adaptive operations and you have the ability to optimize and, and to the key parameters and you can improve financial forecasting and capacity planning. So these are the, the four stages that um, um, of, uh, we, we summarize and the, uh, the, some of the uh, key things, uh, key activities, what our customers doing in their industrial 4.0 journey. And we're um, very excited to walk alongside with you to help you to, to achieve, accelerate, and then and succeed. Um, so this is my uh, discussion today. Um, you can, if you want to know more, you can check out AWS Industrial, um, and this is the website. This is the web address. Um, and also, I want to uh, thank you for come, um, 
to to stay to stay this uh, 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 long, to stay this webinar, to to um, uh, to uh, listen to this discussion. I'm looking forward to uh, have uh, more discussion and dialogue, uh, either here or on LinkedIn, uh, or just uh, just uh, send us and contact us, right? And then my LinkedIn uh, 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 my LinkedIn connections is there, and please uh, feel free to reach out to us and message us. Thank you so much for your time.